of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to dance to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
at all times. Praise the Lord. This is going to end our announcements, but I just wanted to give me a brief, brief moment. The Bible tells us not to grow weary in well-doing. At the proper time, we will reap a harvest. Harvest if we faint not. Amen. It is started again, and it's, it's stated again in 2 uh, Thessalonians 3.13. In the time allowed here, we should go about doing good. And the Bible says, especially for the household of faith. Pastors doing the work of God may feel sometimes, sometimes it may feel some type of pressure, as Paul did coming into Macedonia, as Paul testified to the fighting and fears, conflicts, and harassments. As we fight back, it helps us to persevere. Pastors have a job to help others not grow weary. Amen. Now in Galatians 6, 6, it states, let the one who was taught the word, amen, the one who was taught the word shall all good things share all good things with the one who teaches. The one who teaches you and instructs you in the word, you are to share all good things with them. Amen. We have received instructions and clarity in the word of God as the word is brought forth unto us here at LA Faith Chapel and rightly divided unto those who give ear to hear in this house of faith. In Jesus' name, I want to ask Pastor Pam to please come up for a moment. I want to invite all the pastors to come, please. Okay. Um, can we switch to this now? Question? Can we switch to this? Now, no more this. Great. Then we have to end the Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Praise the Lord. My sister has just said it all. The Bible says when you have a pastor that taught you the word of God. That you also have to so into this life. We have really been blessed by our senior pastor in the past month. Our pastor has, in the spirit of God, have really fed us all, has straightened us to be doers of the word of God. He has called with one of comfort and education word of rebook, it has really blessed us indeed. So we just planned to explore this little coup for him next morning. Just to bless him, just to thank him, we appreciate him. Just to thank him. So we, you know, he's always busy with everything. Pastor, please, can you just, just be a little bit? Come here. Just a little bit. No, just stay there. We, we just want to tell you, we appreciate you. Wow. We thank God for the gift of God in your life. You've been a blessing to us individually at the church in our community. And it was made in our hearts to do this little token just to tell you we love you, we appreciate you. And we wow. ask that the grace of God will continue to abide in your life. And we will continue to be open to receive this inflow of what God doing in your life to be a blessing. So thank you all. You all bring. Thank you. Bring wow. offering. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay. My you collected. <laughs> oh, what a surprise! <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> 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 Let's just thank God. Father, tonight we just want to appreciate the seed that has been planted. We know, oh God, it is not in vain. You will cause this seed to prosper. It shall increase. It shall bring about a bountiful harvest. The harvest of peace, harvest of joy, the harvest of increase. It shall bring about, uh, about divine safety. So thank you because they will always have enough seed to sow. And I just want to thank you because this seed will advocate for them. It will speak for them. It will protect them. It will go ahead of them. It will pave the way for them. It will keep 
them safe and seal them in the blood of the Lamb. Prosper them. Give them long life. Heal their bodies. Strengthen them. Bless their families. Cause them to prosper even in every endeavor of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you all. Thank you for the surprise. <laughs> just to let them know that Pastor just finished a, a series on eschatology yes. and soul winning. So we, we were blessed. We were extremely blessed. And I we just wanted to give a token. Uh, Thank you.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Chi. I want to just say again, Pastor Chi, that your kids are doing really well. Yes, this is teaching them well. It's a joy to see them grow into praise warriors. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, offering was true. While I'm speaking, you can uh, uh, do your physical offering, you know, as well as Sister Terrible said, you know, you your offering on the cell. On the other platform, if you prefer to do it in person, please welcome. So again, it's uh, great to see the, the the youth stepping up, right? It's it's great to see them being excited about singing for the Lord, and serving in the church, and so uh, you guys are doing well in directing them in that path. And, uh, We'll continue to sing great songs here in the church and have the kids express themselves, right? And we are worshiping him in giving and offering. Uh, so you can, uh, let me say, just sing a song for that, you know? Just as the Bible says, yeah, it shall be given unto to you. Oh, let's make it that Give, shall be given unto you. Oh, yeah, you can step forward and give your offering. Give, shall be given unto you. You know, and so when we say, oh, God, I love you, but I don't, I don't really love my, my neighbor, you know, you are actually far away from Jesus. Amen. And so that's why with this song, this next song is a song of blessing. And we want to bless our brethren through this song, because if we bless our brethren, we actually bless God. Amen. And so... 
this.
Um, when she is around, she visits us. She is in LA and she is in town. I just want to welcome you to our service. And she said, I'm going to come to your service this morning. So you are welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. She's an apostle, she's a missionary, she does a lot of international work and travel, especially in Nigeria. We have our own, Pastor Onye is a bride. We are privileged and honored to have her in our midst with her husband, brother Jonathan. They have the singular honor of bringing us here yesterday to celebrate their holy matrimony. Today, they are going to thank God in a typical African way after the bishop brings the word. Before I invite the bishop, I would like for the bishop to introduce a special guest. And I want you to know the bishop didn't come only with our special guest. I know he has a lot to tell us about what she does. But I want to introduce the brain that keeps Bishop Jeff moving. The engine room of his life and his children and grandkids are privileged to oh, yeah. dine with the bishop, our bishop's wife, and his son, my son also, um, and the grandkids. And uh, it's an honor to introduce the wife of our bishop, Bishop Jeff Wright. Sister Debbie is here to support her husband this morning. She is such a wonderful sister and uh, a lover of Jesus Christ. She's truly a blessing. So Bishop, do I need to introduce you? Yes. I wish I didn't have to, but some might have just heard you somewhere in the grapevine no. and some no. must have read about you, but I was just whispering no. to Apostle Sharon. I said, you know, he's been my mentor for over 28 years. And when I became a pastor, he was there for me. And he saw the potential in me. Even before anyone knew what God was going to do, he, by revelation, saw in this young, new African immigrant slash pastor who was yet to be credentialed who was yet to have a green card. And I'm sure when we met, he didn't even know those facts, but he took a chance on me. And at that time, we had about six or seven homeless people, plus my wife, our three kids, and late Pastor George, and I think three more people or four, in a small church that we rented from only in the afternoon, and they gave us only one hour. And Sister June from the family Mennonite church, who was part of our original faith chapel after it broke up, she stayed and she said, Pastor, I need to introduce you to the Mennonite church. I was like, what's the Mennonite church? What, you know, I thought it was some kind of a cult or something. She said, you've not heard of the Mennonite church? I said, no. 
said, you need to admit Pastor Jeff. And my head kind of went into a spiral spin. So she said, I'll bring you to Elder Ferguson from Family Mennonite, and First Family Mennonite, right there on Normandy. And he then introduced, he set up an appointment with Bishop Jeff. Never know, he never met. And we met. And we stood. And he agreed to listen. He came. And to be honest with you, I was really didn't know what to expect. Because the church was a B. It was made up of dust, but eight people with a bunch of homeless people. The first thing out of out of service, out of his mouth, he said, Pastor Pam, how are you able to do this? I would like to work with you. For this is what the Mennonite church has been struggling with. And you are doing it. What do you need? I'll work with you. And like they say, the rest is history. So I just want to appreciate my mentor, my bishop, my friend, my pastor, Bishop Jeff. I welcome him. Can we please rise and appreciate the servant of the Lord? After we gave me a chance. He also hired me and gave me my first real employment in America. Without a green card, he made me staff associate in charge of African and African American congregations in Southern California. A two-year position. And after that, he then introduced me to, I believe last time I counted, it was about eight different Mennonite agencies and organizations. And he made sure I was board member, I was part of it, and it was amazing. To the point whereby through his influence, I became a board member of the Mennonite Missions Network, the biggest Mennonite agency in the world that has um, representation in over 50 something countries all over the world. And I was part of the transition from Commission on Home Ministry and talking about MMA. He is the brain behind it. Because at one of our meetings, I came back and I was just drained, frustrated. I said, Bishop, how come Africans don't have representation in the Mennonite church? And they keep saying, well, you have to have a constituency group. To me, what was a constituency group? I said, we are immigrant pastors and we're doing a lot of work in North America. Give us recognition. The Chinese have been recognized. African-Americans have their own. The Hmong people, Indonesians, the Hispanics, and we are Africans, we need a voice. He said, Pastor Pam, you are the voice. You want a constituency group? He picked up, I'll never forget, in the office in Pasadena. And then we started playing with words. Words and acronyms. And I think we ended up with Mennonite Mission for Men Partnership. Am whatever, Africa Mennonites for Mission Partnerships. And he said, you will lead that group. That was how I led that group. And my wife and I traveled the whole US, soliciting and recruiting African pastors. And we then formed a group that was finally recognized in the Mennonite church. And today, we have the Belizeans, we have so, and today actually we are celebrating the partnership that through you, Bishop, this is going on 
what, about 12 years now. We even went to Niagara Falls through Pastor Femi, and it's amazing what the bishop has done for mission work. Um, and I'm glad to know you, Bishop. So please, you may see that. You may remain standing as I bring up the Bishop. He will then introduce our sister Martha. He knows her more than I do. God bless you, Bishop. Bless you, God bless you. You may sit down, please. Coming to uh, the LA Faith Chapel is always a, a humbling experience uh, because Pastor uh, makes it sound like I did a whole bunch of stuff uh, a few years ago. All, all I did was say, uh, the spirit of the Lord's upon you, brother, go do stuff. And uh, he did. And, you know, there, there wasn't any good logical reason for this African brother from Nigeria to trust some white guy from Rancho Cucamonga to, uh, to, to be there for him. No, no good reason at all for him to trust, but he trusted and uh, he trusted in the Lord. And God used uh, our partnership in, a, in powerful ways uh, mostly with me in the background and Pastor Pam out front leading the way. And so uh, uh, I tell people that uh, God did not give me uh, biological brothers, but uh, he gave me two, two brothers that uh, will be with me for the rest of my days. Uh, one is my brother Joe Monicum from Heston College, and the other is Pastor Pam. When I see Pastor Pam, I don't think of, oh, this is one of the pastors I work with in Mosaic Conference. I think my brother's here. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and to have you be family with me, to when we, the, the dinner he alluded to, the way the seating worked out, he spent the whole evening sitting next to my son, who's now in his mid 30s. Uh, I forget just how old he is. I can't do the math at my age. And Pastor Pam's been part of his life since he was a little kid. And to see the two of them talk to each other as adults and, and uh, uh, share in life together uh, was just incredibly powerful to me. My, my son's uncle. Uh, Woo! Spent an evening yeah. with him, and, 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 it, and for my grandsons to yeah. see that yeah. and uh, and be blessed by that, it's just powerful. So, thank you, my friend. Many of you know that Millie Faith Chapel is part of Mosaic Mennonite Conference, yeah. and then you probably think, what's Mosaic Mennonite Conference? Well, I'll talk more about that later, but I, I want to introduce to you and invite uh, to join me up here uh, one of my many bosses at uh, Mosaic Mennonite Conference, uh, Pastor Marta Castillo. He is the Associate uh, Executive Conference Minister, which if you've met Brother Steve Chris, he's the Executive Conference Minister. Martha is the number two person uh, in the organization. And uh, she has this great God-given superpower. She, uh, she has the power to cancel meetings. I, I have just been, uh, I've been so blessed by that gift that she has shared on several occasions where all of a sudden this meeting and I'm going, oh Lord, I don't know how I'm gonna fit this in. All of a sudden, an email pops up saying, Marta has canceled the meeting. Like, yes, Jesus, you spoke through her. Thank you. Uh, but beyond that superpower, she also has uh, the, the power of the Holy Spirit resident in her life and um, brings to her role uh, 
just this beautiful sense of grace and uh, and wisdom. We Mennonites, we we like to make things really complex. It's it's part of being family together. You know, when you're family together, sometimes they're there are just ways of doing things, and you know you can't quite do it simply. You've got to do it the hard way because, because it's family. Marta keeps figuring out how to do things more and more simply. And uh, I'm just really grateful for, for that gift. Um, we keep working at Mosaic Conference in making it easier and easier to be brothers and sisters together. We don't want to be a conference of churches that tick off a bunch of boxes and say, okay, everybody's follow the rules. Uh, if you follow the rules, you're in. If you don't, you're out. We want to be a body of believers that says the spirit of the Lord is at work in our midst. Let's celebrate that. Let's encourage one another. Let's support one another. Let's resource one another. And that's what Marta does. So, Sister Marta, I'm going to invite you to come and share a few words with us. I told her Friday night that she was preaching, um, and she gave me that wide-eyed look like, oh, no, I'm not. Uh, but uh, come bring us some words of greeting and affirmation from Mosaic, and let's give her a hand. Well, the wonder of being in Christ is that I could come in this morning as a welcomed outsider, amen. as a sister in Christ, amen? In Ephesians 2, we read that Jesus is our peace and that he has made two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And it continues to say that consequently, we are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of God's household. We are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by God's spirit. So today, we are one body in Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all welcomed outsiders, and we all welcome others in the name of Jesus. Mosaic is a group of congregations that is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. We are being built together by the power of the Holy Spirit to become the living temple of the Lord. We are built in pieces, in pieces of pieces of broken, of broken, of beauty, of God, that God, the power of God's Spirit, forms together this beautiful picture, this beautiful vision of who we can be in Jesus Christ. And so, and so, and I just wanted to say that today, just tell you a little bit about Mosaic. We are 66 congregations. Without you, we would be 65. So you are one of those. <laughs> we are located in six to seven states. I couldn't count exactly, so I'm just going to say six or seven in here in the United States. We also have partners in Mission in Mexico and on Honduras and other places around the world, Indonesia. We are 150 plus pastors and we have six or seven worshiping languages. And if you would count all the languages people that worship in, there's probably much more than that. But there's six or seven official worshiping languages. We are new immigrant churches. We are African, we are Hispanic, we are Caribbean, we are African American, we are ethnic Mennonites. Everyone belongs because we are no longer foreigners or strangers, but we are all members. We are members of Mosaic Mennonite Conference, which is just a tiny part of the body of Christ. 
in the world, right? So mosaic is not the end, right? It's much bigger than mosaic. The kingdom of God is much bigger than mosaic. Mosaic is just a small piece. Everyone at one time or another will feel like an outsider. But if we can see ourselves as persons who Christ has welcomed in, into the family of God, if we can see ourselves as someone who is maybe on the outside in some places, but always on the inside with Jesus Christ and in the family of God, then we also will become people who can welcome others in. The story of Peter and Cornelius in the book of Acts. In that story, there are times when I have thought of myself as Peter. But that is not true. I am Cornelius. I am the one who was on the outside who was welcomed in. We are all Cornelius. Yeah. And Peter brought Cornelius in through his own transformation. But Peter was also transformed by the testimony of Cornelius. And so we come together as welcomed outsiders to transform and change and help each other grow into a temple for the Lord. And because we are welcomed in, I want to say it again, because we are welcomed in, we welcome others in. You have chosen to become part of this, again, small part of the body of Christ called Mosaic Conference. But we are fellow citizens with God's people everywhere. And we were all welcomed in so we can welcome each other in and become one in the name of Jesus. So we can become one in the name of Jesus. That means something for Pastor or Bishop Jeff to say that he has two brothers, and one of those brothers is Pastor Kev. Amen. That is transformation. That is God working, becoming one in Jesus Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, today we want to recognize and honor among you your pastors and your leaders, your deacons and your ministers who have decided to join in the journey of receiving their credentials through Mosaic Conference. We are grateful for their commitment and their leadership. And we pray that this process will not be a burden, will not be a burden, will not be a burden, <laughs> on them, but that it will also be an opportunity for growth and relationship and clarity. If you have complaints about the process, I'm the one that you can complain to, right, brother? Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't complain to, to Bishop Ted. He, he has enough on his plate. You can complain to me. But I pray that this process, again, will not be a burden to my brothers and sisters here, but it will be an opportunity for growth and for relationship and clarity. And we, we commit to walking together with you and learning from you. I'd like to invite those who are um, going through this process to come forward. And I'm going to pass the mic back to the bishop. So as, uh, as my colleagues in ministry come forward, that includes you, Pastor Chidi, even though we were already ordained you, we, did, we had to do it by Zoom. So we're bringing you up here in front of everybody. Uh, brother, we're including you because you've been, uh, Pastor yes, Dan, you've been yeah. You've been at being credentialed for 28 years and still yeah. haven't gotten around to finishing it. So. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. Let's see. Sister Cherokee, you here? Yeah. Sister Grace. Uh, 
she might be out with the kids. Yes, she's with the kids. So, brothers and sisters, I, I commend this. So I want to commend this group of men and women who God has called to serve LA Faith Chapel, but also beyond the LA Faith. Uh, one of the one of the realities of ministry is that God God has a way of calling us to wider and newer and deeper things, and I suspect that will happen with some of these brothers and sisters. God's at work through Los Angeles Faith Chapel to bless Los Angeles, to bless California, to bless the U.S., to bless Mosaic Conference, to bless the world. Uh, this isn't just a ministry in a, in a little building in South L.A. This is a global ministry with global impact. And I rejoice at the way God has raised up leaders in the midst. And so uh, Bishop Martha is going to uh, offer uh, prayer and anointing uh, for each of you uh, in the work that you do. And uh, she's going to tell me what to do next. Ask Pastor uh, Bishop Jeff to anoint each of our ministers and pastors today. The anointing of the Spirit, reliance and awareness of the Spirit of God at work is what makes our work bear fruit. It is the water that, and the oil of God, of God's spirit that runs through our roots that helps us to stay green in times of drought and allows us to bear fruit in all seasons. So Lord, I just pray this morning, blessed Lord, heavenly Father, great God, you call each one of us. You know our name. You saw us in our mother's wombs, Lord. And you have a purpose and a reason and a ministry and a calling for each one of our lives. Lord, I don't know each of these persons very well, but you know them, Lord. And you, Lord, know that the plans that you have for them, you know, Lord, what their willingness, what their desire, Lord, to serve you, where it will take them, and what you will be able to do to them, Lord. How their yes and amen will be able, Lord, to bear fruit in this community, and again, Lord, throughout the world. We pray, Lord, for them today, as they continue their journey, in your hands, Lord, as they continue this journey of obedience to you, Lord, we pray that you would bless them, and that you would keep them, Lord, that you would honor them, Lord, that you would lift them up, that you would strengthen them, Lord, in times of need, Lord, that you, Lord, oh God, would take them to the places that they need to go, that they would come before you, Lord, that they would seek your face, Lord, and that they would work from that place which your spirit moves them, Lord, that they would work with joy, they would work with patience, that they would work with love, Lord, and kindness, Lord, they would work with passion, Father God. We praise you, Lord, that you have called us. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us by your name, Lord, that your kingdom come and that your will be done, Lord. 
on earth as it is in heaven. We are grateful, Lord, that your people have committed today to be part of our conference. Lord, it is a blessing to have them, Lord. And as we have been welcomed in, Lord, we welcome them in. And we pray, Lord, that we would always walk in your grace and in your love every day in every way. I pray for this congregation, Lord, for the people that are here today, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to increase the capacity, Father, of each member of this congregation, Lord, because some are called to, to certain ministries, but others, Lord, are called to serve and to, and to care for the congregation and their neighbors in different ways, Lord. Not everyone is called to be up front, but some of us, Lord, all of us, Lord, are called to honor you and to honor your kingdom and to do your work. So I pray, Lord, for this congregation, for this community, Lord, that you would continue, Father, to use them for your honor and your glory, Lord. That they would continue to grow and be blessed, Lord, and continue to be a testimony. We praise you, Lord, so many wonderful things that we cannot even hope or imagine yet, Lord, that you will do in this space in this place through these people. So we praise you, oh God. We honor you today. And we are thankful. We are so thankful, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With our camera, she wants a big We can send it. Yeah. You can take with our camera. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Great. Oops. One more. That's fine. <laughs> Are you good? Three. Okay. Okay. You will tell us what you are doing. <laughs> editing. I was editing. <laughs> Pastor McKinto reminded me uh, Friday night that um, white, white folks have watches, but Africans have time. Um, and so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that truth. Um, I've, uh, I've been asked to share a few words, and, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to do that. They will be a few words. Um, because at my age, the Lord uh, has a way of uh, reminding me that I should uh, sit down uh, every so often uh, because he tightens up the sciatic nerve in my hip. And, and it's like, okay, uh, we've heard enough from you, Jeff, sit down. Uh, but I wanted to, uh, to read a passage of scripture and, and talk a little bit about God's commission to ministry. The, <clears throat> the disciples... Have, uh, they think they've seen the risen Lord. Uh, in Luke's gospel, Jesus rises from the dead and the women see him and they proclaim 
you know, if, if, when it comes to proclaiming the resurrection, we men ought to sit down and shut up and just let the women preach. All right. Um, but I'm up here, so I, but the women proclaim the resurrection. And then Jesus walked with two of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. And after that Emmaus story, uh, all of a sudden, Picking up in Luke 24, verse 36. While they were telling these things, he himself, Jesus, stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened. They thought they were seeing a spirit. And moving on in the story to verse 44. These are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written, that Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to wait in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And led them out as far as Bethany, and lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he was parted from them and carried up into the heavens. And they, after worshiping him, returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were constantly in the temple. Praising God. You know, God, God's at work. And, and I want to just take a moment to express to you some words of gratitude about how I see God at work. First, I'm grateful for this congregation. For those of you gathered on Zoom, for those of you gathered in person, you have been through a lot as a church. You have You've struggled with this pandemic in these last two years. And it, it might have been easier to just say, forget about it. We'll just close up shop, wait for the all clear signal and start over. That, that would have been the easy thing to do. But instead, as a congregation, you've kept figuring out ways to be faithful in witness and in worship and in work together. So I'm grateful for LA Faith Chapel and your legacy of faithful witness. You've been at it now almost 30 years and God continues to raise up leaders. God continues to raise up opportunity. God continues to raise up challenge and then gives you the grace to meet this challenge. So I'm just grateful for you as a congregation. Know that every day you're being prayed for as a church. I'm grateful for your lead pastor and his wife. They pastor together and their visions of facing seasons of discouragement with joy. Their, pastor Pam introduced me with all the good stuff, but there were hard times too. There was, there was a time when the funding agency repossessed the building. There have been times when the homeless ministry struggled to stay afloat. There, there have been times when, when people's lives weren't necessarily dialed into following Jesus and were instead dialed into building themselves up. And Pastor Pam, Pastor Grace have met all of those challenges with the joy of the Lord. Amen. I, we've, we've been friends, we've been family almost 30 years. I've never seen him lose his temper. We've been family for 30 years. He's seen me lose my temper plenty of times. But I've never seen him lose it. It's always God has something to teach us. God will bring us through this. 
He's been my teacher of faith all these years. To be able to face seasons of discouragement with joy is the heart of the ministry in the 21st century in North America. If you're not prepared to deal with discouragement, to deal with disappointment, to deal with things not always working out, then do something else in life. Don't do ministry. Uh, there will be discouragement. Jesus says, be of good cheer. I will overcome the world. Yeah. And thanks be to God for Chuang and Grace Pan who model what that overcoming looks like. I'm grateful for Mosaic Mennonite Conference, this association of churches that was started 297 years ago, in 1725, on the principle of what was called then brotherly agreement. Today we would say brotherly and sisterly agreement. Uh, and it was reinvented about three years ago to be more formational, missional, and intercultural. Uh, Martha talks about 66 churches. There are also about 34 uh, what we call conference-related ministries. So over 100 places of worship and ministry call Mosaic their home in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Vermont, Florida, California. I think that's six states. Okay, it's got to be seven. Marta says it's seven and seven. We have relationships with churches in Puerto Rico, Honduras, Mexico, Indonesia, and soon through the work of Amahoro International, we look forward to a CRM, a conference related mission ministry relationship in the Great Lakes of Africa. Uh, God is faithful and keeps bringing us into opportunity, bringing us into his vision, bringing us into his mission. Mission is not what we do. It's what God calls us into. We, the church doesn't have a mission. God's mission has a church. And I'm just grateful that Mosaic Mennonite Conference continues to answer that call. When the bell rings for mission to go forth, Mosaic Conference stands up and counts the cost, pays the bills, and makes it happen. Uh, and I'm just very grateful. Some of you know that I'm living, uh, Debbie and I are living a very different life this year, that uh, we've been in Riverside, California for the last 16 years. But this year we are back and forth between Southeast Pennsylvania and Riverside. It's my great privilege to uh, be the interim pastor at the Blooming Glen Mennonite Church. Now, when you hear Blooming Glen Mennonite Church, if you think rural, out in the country, farmland all around, you'd be absolutely right. Blooming Glen was founded in 1753. It's been on the same piece of property since then. In the church cemetery, there are 2,800 tombstones. Uh, there are families in this church that have been part of it for seven generations. Um, there is a lot of rootedness, groundedness in this church. And God, in his sense of humor, has asked me, who has spent his whole life doing urban ministry and working on the fly, and how do we improvise, and how do we do things with duct tape and bailing wire and chewing gum and hold it together, He's called me to this congregation for a year, not forever, but for a year to work with them as they are in transition. And so I get the best of both worlds. I get to be in a very, very traditional Mennonite congregation, and I get to come home to LA Amen. Chapel Amen. and be with you. And, uh, so God is just blessing Debbie and I tremendously. You know, this passage in Luke that um, I read to you is one of four great commissions in the Gospels. Matthew's great commission is the one we know the best. It's the call to be a global movement of preaching and teaching and baptizing and church planting. We, we know all about that. 
Mark's great commission, the end of that gospel, is about confronting evil head on and defeating the toxic and deadly powers of evil. John's great commission is about receiving the Holy Spirit and forgiving those who have betrayed us. And Luke and Acts, the passage that I read to you, is about joyfully waiting on the Holy Spirit for direction. You know, I'm a white guy. I hate waiting. I've got to watch. I've got places to go, people to see, things to do. What's next? The gospel today, what's next? Wait. Wait. Several months ago, was, well, a year ago, was my ministry at Madison Street Church and the Brethren of Christ came to an end. Debbie and I began to talk and pray together about what we were going to do. And one day I said, what are you here? What, what's God's word to you? No, it was the other way around. You asked me. Yeah, she asked me. What do you hear God say? And I said, wait. She said, that's exactly what I hear. Well, you know, if God speaks to Debbie and I with the same word, you better take that seriously. <laughs> That's right. So we heard the word wait, and it was the first time in my life, in my ministry, that I heard wait. Uh, brothers and sisters, I gotta tell you, waiting is hard. Yeah. Right. Waiting is hard. You got, you know, the bills begin to stack up, and you got just enough to get by, but you're not quite sure what's gonna happen down the road. God keeps saying, wait, and I want to take matters into my own hands, God. And he says, no, don't. You've been commissioned, and waiting is a part of it. We are not forgotten, brothers and sisters. That was such a beautiful song. Thank you. So thank you. That was so powerful. We are not forgotten. God, God waits with us. God doesn't just say, oh, go sit in the corner and I'll get back to you when I've got some time. He comes and joins us and he sits with us and he waits with us and cries with us. He holds our hand in the dark of the night when we are worried and anxious and full of pain. And in Luke's great commission, the resurrected Jesus commissions his disciples to wait for ministry. And he does it by giving three, four words to his people, to his disciples. First of all, he opens their mind to the witness description. Waiting is an opportunity to become dialed in to the word of God. We get so busy in ministry that we start leaning on all the old stuff we've done. We start, you know, where is that? Where is that old sermon I preached three years ago? I'll just pull that out again and recycle. Waiting is an opportunity to dial back into the scriptures. It was, it was my great joy in this last year to recover a tradition I've had for a number of years called the Week of the Bible, where I just set all the other ministry aside. And I just start at Genesis 1 and go to Revelation 22 and just read straight through. If I don't understand everything, if the, if the list of begats and begones are too long, I just read over them. God will speak to me through what God wants to say. I just need to be faithful in reading. Our, our ministry begins with letting Jesus open our minds to the word. Our commission is also centered in the healing and forgiving message of the resurrection. Now, we're almost all here of good Pentecostals as well as Anabaptists. Some of us try harder to be Pentecostals than others. I have to try it. I have to work at it. Pentecostalism doesn't come easily for me because I'm stuck in my, in my left brain up here. But this I know, the, the work of healing, the holy, miraculous work of healing, and the holy, miraculous work of forgiving comes out of the resurrection. It doesn't come out of 
how spiritual we are, how good we are, how pious we are, how well we speak in tongues, how well we interpret tongues. None of that ultimately matters. What matters is, do we believe in the resurrection? Does, does Jesus' empty tomb mean something to us on Monday, not just on Sunday? Does it mean something the rest of the year, not just one day out of the year? Our ministry is centered in the healing and forgiving, restoring message of the resurrection. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Our commission, thirdly, is formed by making waiting a spiritual habit. Sometimes we only wait when God sits us down hard and says, you need a timeout. Uh, I've had to do that with my son and daughter over the years, where it's like, okay, uh, enough, enough, go sit and time out for a while. Oh, I don't want to do that. And they go and they calm down and we work it out. Well, that's not a spiritual habit. That's discipline. That's punishment. We need to develop the spiritual habit of waiting, of taking time out to listen to the Lord. Listen, we are all in ministry here by vocational servants of the Lord. We all have to do things to pay the bills and to serve God. We're all hustling. Sometimes 24-7, 365. But if we don't develop in that the spiritual habit of waiting, Taking time away of, of Sabbath, we will ultimately fail in ministry. We will burn out. And we will lose the blessing that God has given us. And then the fourth one, boy, this is one that you, had, you folks at Faith Chapel have just got to start working on. I tell you, the, the blessing of Christ's great commission to us is a lifestyle of worship and joy. And I, I don't know. I, I don't think I see enough worship and joy in this congregation. You're our teachers. You're my teacher. What it means to have a lifestyle of worship and joy. Thank you for the gift that is Sunday morning here. Those, those are the things that anger and form and shape Christ's commission to us. If we want to serve Jesus, our minds have to be open to the word. Our lives have to be centered in the resurrection. We have to develop the spiritual habit of waiting. And we have to live a lifestyle of worship and joy. And so our calling, sisters and brothers, is to be a people who joyfully wait. Because waiting is an active thing. It's not passive. And waiting is not an individual thing. It's done together as a community. We wait together by being students of Scripture together. We wait together by being an Easter people living in the resurrection power. We wait together for the Holy Spirit to give us guidance and direction. And we wait together in joyful worship. And that active communal waiting led to the transformation of the day of Pentecost. Yeah. And so this morning, I want to leave you with a question and a quote. And the question is this. Can you trust the Holy Spirit to empower you at the right time and the right place to witness to the resurrection in the right way? Can you do that? Can you trust the Holy Spirit? Not to empower you to do great things, but to empower you to wait for the right time and the right place to witness to the resurrection in the right way. Great missionary statesman of the 20th century, Leslie Newbigin, had served nearly 50 years in India. And uh, the church in South India sent him home to England, where he discovered that England had completely changed and become very secular. And towards the end of his life, he taught in colleges and seminaries and lectured and wrote 
encouraging the church in the West to recover its missionary witness. And in his 90s, he was invited to a dinner in his honor in Bristol, England. And speaker after speaker stood up and appreciated him in so many different ways. And then he was asked to speak. And at 95, I think, almost totally blind, he's helped to his feet and he quotes this passage of scripture that I read from Mark's gospel. And then he smiled and said this, mission begins with an explosion of joy. The news that the rejected and crucified Jesus is alive is something we cannot suppress. It must be told. Who could be silent about the resurrection? The mission of the church and the pages of the New Testament is like the fallout of a vast explosion. It's a radioactive fallout that is not lethal, brothers and sisters, but it's life giving. And so I say to you this morning, let the joy explode. Let God speak. Let the great things come forth, not because we've earned it or deserve it or have figured it out, but because God is at work. And he has not forgotten us. Thanks be to God for his word. All right. Okay. Let's just appreciate our bishop one more time. Let's put our hands and just bless him and Sister Mata and his wife. Just speak blessings upon his life. Speak a new zeal. Speak upon his life an abundant knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yes, speak into the life of his wife, speak strength, speak renewed joy in their ministry. Sister Martha's work, speak increase the law, and above all, healing and peace that cometh only through the knowledge of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Bless them, cover their shape, and increase them to do more mission and more work. Thank you for empowering them afresh. In Jesus' name we pray. The church will hear simply say, Amen. At this point, we will invite as the great school leaders in this last segment of our service as we bring our service to an own to an end with a crescendo. Praise the Lord. I'd like to call Pastor FM quickly because our time is fast spent. This afternoon, we are excited as a church because we have increased. We have a family that has added to us and we are giving God praise. So, Pastor FM, please tell us why we are here this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's, it's really a joy to see people that love each other, that not wants to enter this holy journey, that God at the foundation of the world created. Amen. Yesterday we have the privilege to witness friendship, move to a next level. <laughs> of Hallelujah. So I'm using this opportunity to ask Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Jonathan, I look up to please go out 
I will do it just like Pastor said the African way. That's you are going to dance in mm -hmm. and thank even to the Lord. In Africa, after your wedding day, you come the next day to give thanks to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because we know it has been a, a journey of prayer, a journey of challenges, just like Bishop, uh, uh, Bishop has said this afternoon, a journey of struggle. But at the end of the day, after 17 days, yes. uh, 17 years, our sister finally said, I am ready. <laughs> uh, we could see patience, we could see. Uh, the Bible says, hope is never divine. So let's go out, please, my brothers and sisters, let's go out and join them as we come forth. And our hearts will come and bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are right. Thank the Lord.
days that will be full of great opportunity and the mundane trivial stuff of being married. Give them joy in all of them. They may each day be rich in the experience of one another and in the presence of your Holy Spirit in their lives. We covenant as the body of Christ to walk with our brother and sister and to continue to encourage them in their journey together, to continue to bless them in their life together, to continue to receive from them uh, their ministry in our midst. So God, thank you for bringing them together, for knitting their hearts together, for binding them to this community. Go with us all in the way of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Congratulations. All right. With that, and for those of you in Zoom land, um, you have missed the handshake and the hugging that the bride and bridegroom would have loved to give you, but you can hug them from your swings. We love you all. We, this brings to an end our service in the sanctuary. And I believe there's uh, some refreshment, okay? So we will go out and enjoy our refreshments. Let's rise up as we share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I see a brother behind.